Beginner's Guide to Calculating Calories If your goal is to lose weight, you might have been told that you need to work out your calorie requirements. Like a dartboard, you're told the number to aim at, you hit that number, you lose weight, simple, not sure what all the fuss is about. But despite it sounding easy and the perceived meticulousness of counting calories, lots of people don't get the results that they expect. So let's explain some of the reasons why. This chart shows you something called total daily energy expenditure, which is just a fancy term for the total number of calories you burn per day. Each of these components are different reasons that you burn energy. The biggest one is basal metabolic rate at the bottom, which is also referred to as resting metabolic rate or resting energy expenditure. Imagine that you're lying in bed all day doing absolutely nothing. Not even watching TV, no cheeky in-bed snacks, and not even a sleepy scratch of your genitals. Even when you're lying perfectly still in a dark room not doing anything, your body is still burning energy, breathing, maintaining organ function, etc. Your basal metabolic rate doesn't really fluctuate on a day-to-day -day basis, but you can influence it over time. If your body weight goes up or goes down or you build lean body mass, these can impact your BMR. But everything else above that is the shit that you are more in control of on a daily basis. So first things first, you go online and you use a calculator to work out your BMR. None of the other stuff yet, just your basic energy requirements. A review paper that looked at the accuracy of different resting energy expenditure calculators found that the most accurate one still exceeded margins of error of 10% in about a quarter of people. As an example, if a 250 pound male tried to find their BMR, they might be told that it's 2,007 calories per day or they might be told that it's 2,311 calories per day. Then when you factor in physical activity multipliers, shit gets a lot more complicated. Let's say that you select something like moderately active because you go to the gym three times per week. Pointing out the obvious, but just going to the gym three times per week tells us fuck all about how much energy someone's burning. You might be smashing out two hour long cardio sessions that are so brutal, you simultaneously vomit and shit your pants. Or you might be doing 20 minutes of lackadaisical bicep curls whilst browsing YouTube. When most people think about burning calories, they automatically gravitate towards exercise. But exercise has a much bigger, much more influential sibling that's been kept away hidden in a closet out of the public eye. Non-exercise activity thermogenesis is a fancy term for calories burned through movement outside of exercise when you're walking around the house, carrying things, going up and down the stairs, maintaining posture, fidgeting, etc. Depending on your occupation, it has been estimated that NEAT can vary by up to 2,000 calories per day, comparing someone in a sedentary job to someone in an active job. And this is very difficult to estimate using an activity multiplier, especially when it's only asking you about your exercise habits. So if I put my own stats into a calculator to estimate how many calories I burn per day, I might be told that to maintain my body weight, I have to eat 2,467 calories per day. But another calculator told me to eat 2,629 calories per day. And another calculator told me I had to eat 3,233 calories per day. Well, that is super fucking helpful, isn't it? Remember that review paper earlier that discussed the accuracy of resting energy expenditure formulas? Well, when it came to total daily energy expenditure, they basically said, nah, fuck that, mate. Let's pretend for a moment that all the stars are aligned and the calculator that you use actually guesses how many calories you burn per day. Do you think that number stays the same every single day? Or more realistically, will it go up on some days and down on some days? Big problem number one, the target that you are aiming for is never guaranteed to be super accurate. And it, it can't be, so just keep that in mind. Big problem number two, if you went super fucking obsessive and actually had your metabolic rate measured so you knew exactly how many calories you burn per day as accurately as anyone ever could. You can now generate a target on how many calories per day you need to eat if you want to lose weight. But this relies on the fact that you can accurately track your calorie intake anyway. One research study had participants that couldn't lose weight despite eating 1200 calories per day or less. When they had their metabolic rate and food intake assessed, it turns out that they were under-reporting their calorie intake by 47%, over 1,000 per day. Calorie under-reporting is extremely common, and this has been acknowledged in multiple review papers. Long story short, lots of people are trying to pair a calorie intake target, which might not be accurate, with a measured calorie intake, which probably isn't accurate either. If you really want to track your calories, which by the way, absolutely is not mandatory, Try this instead. Rather than starting by generating a target which might not be accurate, why don't you reverse the process? Record what you're eating now for a few days. Perhaps you estimate that you're eating around 2,500 calories per day or whatever. If your body weight is staying roughly static at the moment, you have found approximately 
calorie maintenance levels based on whatever physical activity you're doing now. Does it matter if you don't know exactly the number of calories you're eating or burning per day? Not unless you're one of those people that gets aroused by spreadsheets and decimal places anyway. You can use this as a starting point and adjust your habits accordingly, whether you know the precise numbers or not.